to lose his altitude and descend into a pinpoint landing. That parachute, not like the parachutes of yesteryear where it was just gravity, is actually an airfoil, flies much like the wing of an aircraft. The excitement. I, I cannot. I love Sorensen. Adding that smoke, adding that sound to this. The greatest way to honor old glory. Airplanes, flying, skydivers, and proud patriotic Americans. Thank you very much, Jenny, and I appreciate that. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the history of these airplanes, such as you see going over here right now. These are the North American T-28s that are making their paths. And we're going to cover from World War II right up into the Korea and also the Vietnam era. With and on takeoff roll right now, part of our Vietnam history, the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk. And we will be talking a lot more about that airplane in just a few minutes. Now I want to take you to the era of the 1930s, the late 90s. For the United States of America, we did not get involved as a nation until that day, December 7th, 1941. Is some of the aircraft that we have talked about here that were used as trainers. Again, the BT-13 and also Air Force started down the line as original 337 Skymasters. So, their aircraft that we want to point out on the other side. Now, let's take uh, some of the other aircraft that are turning in here. Let's go back to the era of freighters. As I mentioned, and again, the Navy version of that was the M2S. Once they progressed through that, they would then go into the AT-6s, which we are going to have going by here in just a little bit. In fact, and as we have the uh, T-6s coming across here, I want you to look at that nice V formation that they have. And again, we'll talk about this particular airplane. If you flew it in the U.S. Army Air Corps or U.S. Army Air Forces, it was called the T-6 Texan. And we have a nice uh, version of that on here. SNJ. And the reason for that was that most of them are Royal Canadian Forces that were actually trained right here in Central Florida. Machine base for both, believe it or not, fighters and also bombers, as well as an airport just to the east of us over here at Bartow. So these airplanes that you see flying here are part of our history that actually have to do with where you're standing here right now. the number one air power in the world by the end of World War II. 
Now, the first aircraft that you see taking off here is an airplane. Formation. During 
World War II. When P-51s, like the one that's rolling out here right now, return from combat, if one of the individuals had been shot down, they would actually come back to their home field and leave that position open. Yeah. <laughs> 
Allen. Fred Allen. High angle of attack capabilities. He's got enough power as he shuts the throttle forward to go around for another time. Coming up next is going to be a night in the hornet. F-17 and noticed one important thing. Two engines. Look down the tail. position from a diamond into a uh, echelon formation. Now the AT-6 was the last aircraft Now, as, uh, and again, I want to point out that L-26 because uh, the pilot did make sure I understood that at one time it actually was uh, with the call sign of Air Force Two. So, I was also using the trailer. That was used by the U.S. Army as a multi-engine trainer during the 1960s and 70s. Most of the training going on back then was... Uh,
said cases and put a little bit more. They say a dozen, a handful, and we'll give you some numbers here. Let's just take, like, for example, the uh, Boeing B-17, over 12,000, uh, 12,000, And today there's probably about 13 to maybe sometimes 15 that are left flying. around again. I want you to look at it and you'll find out what we call it the big Just gonna let you listen to those nice sound of those uh really good engines as I go by. Some of the history that we have, some of you may remember back in the 70s when they had TV show. Uh, 214, the Black Sheep Squadron. If we could get this thing wound up, we would be able to show you or tell you about the whistling death. Because of the way that the aircraft is designed, if you look at the wing, there are intercoolers that are located in the wing route. Once you got that airplane going about 350 to 400 miles an hour, falling down. So here again, an interesting airplane when it got to this one. Transport than any other aircraft that we had during World War II. That particular airplane, if you look at the color scheme, was painted in invasion stripes. And what that meant was is that that was part of the D-Day of invasion paint scheme that was used. Believe it or not, the Germans had formation heavy left. and also the C model. We won't go into how it happened, but the fact that there were some that were repatriated by the uh, Russians. And they what I want to tell you about here now is remember how I talked about those young kids that we had before? Aircraft commander, he was 